Hello everyone and welcome to Nancy's Magic Touch and DIYs. In today's video, I am going to share with you how I created three Christmas frames for my home Christmas decor. So without any further ado, grab a nice warm cup of tea or a nice warm cup of cocoa and let's get started. I bought this frame at the Great Canadian Dollar Store. It comes already like that. So it's really convenient because you don't have to make a frame. And I also bought these fabric bag um, bags pack at Walmart. And I bought two because I wanted the smaller one in this set and the larger one in the other set. So now I'm going to trace uh, this canvas on this fabric bag and I am going to cut it up. So now I'm just taking some of this fabric off. Um, I just want to give it a fray look. So I'm going to go ahead and take as much as my heart desire. In order to see if I frayed it enough, I'm just going to put it on top of my canvas piece and see if um, it's enough fraying and I think I want a bit more. I really want the fraying to show so I'm going to do a little bit more. Now that I have uh, the fraying part to my liking, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my Mod Podge and I am going to saturate the back of this fabric with the Mud Podge. And while I do this, I want to make sure that I'm not putting any Mud Podge on the fraying part of the fabric. Now I'm going to take my canvas and apply this fabric uh, on top of it and I am going to uh, press on it to get rid of all any kind of bubble or any pleat or anything like that and I'm going to also put some Mod Podge on top and then again don't forget to avoid um, touching the fraying part of the fabric and I always use uh, matte Mod Podge. Now I'm going to take the smaller fabric bag and I'm going to cut um, the front logo into a square.
I'm going to repeat what I did with the other piece of fabric with the Mod Podge avoiding all the fraying area. I frayed uh, the fabric as well on this part. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing and apply in the middle of the canvas. Now I'm going to use some white crafts paint and I'm simply going to dry brush some of this paint over the frame. I'm going to speed up the process uh, by drying my frame with my hair dryer along with my canvas as well. I'm using a small tool just to lift the fraying on the fabric just to give it some more dimension. Now I'm going to go ahead and hot glue the canvas to the frame. I'm going to nail a hook on the back so I can hang this on the wall. And here is the final result. I needed a little frame to put into my magnetic uh, fridge display and I wanted something candy cane related as uh, it's what I'm using for my tear tray. So I really wanted something to match uh, in the kitchen. So uh, this is a perfect little added touch to my display. I have this whole canvas at home, it's damaged, it's got a hole in it. I didn't throw it away because I figured I'd do something with it at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and use this today for a project. I have purchased this beautiful gift bag um, at Walmart. So I'm going to go ahead and use this um, for my frame. So I'm going to just cut the whole front of this bag. Now I'm going to use some of my Mud Podge with a sponge brush and apply that to the canvas.
Now I'm going to put the front part of the bag onto the canvas and I'm just gonna rub it really well just to make sure it adheres properly. I'm going to take a ruler and just rub it against um, this uh, pitcher to get rid of any of the bubbles that are remaining. I'm going to put some Mod Podge on the bottom of the truck and then I am going to sprinkle some fake snow. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the top. I took my frame outside and I'm giving it three coat of clear protector. I went in the garage and I had some wood pieces left so I'm going to create a frame for this canvas so I cut the wood to sizes and now I'm going to sand these piece of wood with my rotary sander take them in the house and give them a stain uh, I am going to choose a stain color that I think is going to um, go well with this frame Originally, I was going to try to match the wood uh, piece on the back of the truck, but then I decided that I wanted something a um, little bit more soothing for my entrance, so I decided to go with a gray color. The stain color I used it is called Weathered Gray by Veritane and I am just going to give it one good coat and let it dry properly. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some white paint and paint all the side of the canvas to make sure that none of this black canvas come through.
and I'm speeding up the process by using my hair dryer to dry the paint. Now I'm just using my nail gun to put this frame together to the canvas. And here is the final result. This truck frame, it is so cute and so simple to make. Um, anybody can do this uh, and it suits my entrance perfectly. I went in the garage and found this piece of wood and it was so close to the size that I wanted that I didn't bother doing anything with it. So now I'm going to give it a good coat of 123 primer before I apply my paint just to make sure that this wood color doesn't come through. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give it two good coats of my white paint. This paint is called Bleached Linen. That's the paint uh, color of all my trims all over my house and my ceilings and whatnot. So I decided to use the same paint. I went onto my Cricut Design Space and created myself um, a sign, a stencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that up. As you can see, my stencil is cut, but I have made a boo-boo. I want the bottom letter, the large ones to be red and the top part to be black and I was gonna just do it with vinyl but since I made a mistake I am just gonna weed this and I am going to paint instead of using the vinyl so um, I am just going to uh, weed the letters out rather than the backing so that will create my stencil on my piece of wood in order to paint this piece I measured and applied my stencil to my board and now what I'm going to do is I'm giving two coats of um, protector uh, to this so that will avoid as much bleeding as I can from the paint. So I'm just um, using the polyurethane uh, protector from Bare, and like I said, I'm going to give it two coats. I'm just using uh, just a cheap paintbrush to do that. I have all kinds of paint samples um, from Home Depot, uh, from the Bear Company. These are only $5, so I've been collecting all kinds of different colors, and I'm gonna use the red that I have on hand. And I'm just applying this paint with a makeup sponge, and I'm just dabbing on. I'm not using a paintbrush. This will avoid as much bleeding as possible by doing it this way. So I am going to also give it three coats of this paint by dabbing the paint on with the makeup sponge. I'm also doing the exact same thing to the top letters with black paint. So I'm not sure what happened, but even though with the protector I put on, my paint still bled, but that's okay. I am going to take a small, tiny paintbrush and I'm just gonna go correct all the things that don't look so good with my original uh, bleached linen paint. Now the bottom part didn't bleed as much as the top part and I'm just wondering if I didn't uh, forget to put the second coat on top 
um, and really maybe I just didn't apply my protector properly because I normally don't have this issue um, also I usually use the spray protector and maybe this makes a difference uh, from brushing the protector on so I may go back to spray and protector just to see if that gives me a better result again but I've never had this issue before but that's okay that's an easy easy fix so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of paint where needed with a very tiny uh, paintbrush. Now I did the same process as the previous frame for my canvas so I'm doing the exact same thing and I'm using the stain by Benjamin Moore in Dragon Breath for this project. And here is the final result. I absolutely love it. I really wanted a frame to put above uh, my bed and this is the perfect piece to uh, the finishing touch to my bedroom decor. The stain color on the frame is absolutely perfect because I made it match the exact same color stain I use on my nightstand that I created for myself. So that's it for this video folks. If you liked what you see, please give me the big thumbs up. I want to hear your comments down below. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel yet, well today is a perfect time to hit that red button. Until next time folks, have yourself a wonderful day.